And this one says, um, chapter eight, should you venture offshore with offshore asset protection trusts? Section five, chapter eight, should you venture offshore with offshore asset protection trust? Case study 16, Jason. Jason was a successful entrepreneur engaged in a risky business. His problem was that he made money, lots of money, in a perfectly legitimate business, and for that he was a target. Jason had a thriving firm that manufactured and distributed dog food. All breeds loved Jason's dog food, making him fabulously wealthy, but his thoroughbred business brought out the mongrels. Jason had been sued personally along with his company 12 times in the previous four years. The mongrels sued him for false advertising when the face of a healthy dog which had never eaten Jason's dog food appeared in an ad. No one, not the judge, jury, or plaintiff's attorney seemed to mind that not one person had all been injured in the whole affair. The mongrel sued him for false advertising when the face of a healthy dog, which had never eaten Jason's dog food. Jason had been sued for mysterious stomach cramps in dogs that had supposedly eaten his food, although no one could come close to proving that the dogs were actually sick, much less that they had eaten his food. He had even been sued for giving away free dog food to animal shelters when a group claimed that prolonging the dog's lives led to overcrowding, thus creating a public health hazard. Jason felt that with reason taking a back seat, he could not win in such a litigious setting. Defending each crazy and maddening lawsuit cost him at least 50000 in attorney's fees, and yet, if he took a case all the way to court and won, no one ever ever forced the plaintiff to repay his costs. He was the one who was damaged each and every time he was sued. Jason knew he had to protect himself from these frivolous lawsuits. He acknowledged that his company, a Nevada corporation, would be sued in the regular course of business, although he never guessed it would be to such a bizarre degree. However, increasingly, Jason had been named as an individual defendant for being an officer and director of the company by plaintiffs seeking his personal liability for corporate acts. And in states like California, courts, courts were quite willing to pierce or essentially ignore the corporate veil and hold Jason individually responsible. So that although Jason had a Nevada corporation, Nevada had one of the strongest laws in the United States on piercing the corporate veil. Because the company sold dog food in California, they were subject to California's very troubling breakdown of corporate law and lack of judicial restraint. Fuck California. All this led Jason to investigate the possibility of protecting his future. with an offshore asset protection trust. Key points, an asset protection trust, APT, can shield your wealth from attack. To be effective and not considered a fraudulent conveyance, an asset protection trust must be set up in advance of any problems. It is best to set one up as soon as practicable as, as opposed to too late for protection. The asset protection trusts and the offshore corporations and LLCs owned by each trust are exempt from taxation in select foreign jurisdictions. I will, we're going to read this quote. We shall not cease from exploration and the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and on the place for the first time. We shall not cease from exploration. And the end of all of our exploring will be to arrive where we started and on the place for the first time. So Jason had wondered why he should accumulate wealth when the legal system allowed plaintiffs' attorneys to legally extort it from him. Then he learned about the Asset Protection Trust, which more and more Americans are using to shield themselves from attack. Jason was not interested in insulating himself from acts that were his responsibility. If he got in a car wreck and it was his fault, he would pay what he owed. He wasn't interested in shirking his societal obligations, but he did object to the groundless claims conjured up by rapacious plaintiff, plaintiff's attorneys. If an asset protection, no, if an asset, what is it called? Asset protection trust. And if an asset protection trust would keep them at bay, he was all in favor for it. Jason learned the following. Under the laws of Nevis, a Caribbean nation, the Cook Islands, located in the South Pacific and the other select offshore jurisdictions, asset protection is offered through proper planning and structure. Likewise, protection can be protection can be had utilizing a New Zealand trust. While New Zealand is a high tax jurisdiction, benefits are offered to foreign trusts established there. 
A favored structure involves placing assets into a family limited partnership whereby you are the 1% general partner and the asset protection trust is a 99% limited partner with 99% of the limited partnership assets held and administered by a trustee in, in Nevis or Cook Islands, the assets are off your balance sheet. And yet, as a 1% general partner, you still manage to control the assets. This is a secret that families such as the Gettys and Rockefellers have long used to maintain their wealth, control of assets without actual ownership. In the event you are sued or your wealth comes under attack, the trustee can request a dissolution of the partnership and have 99% of the limited partnership's assets transferred offshore to the trust. In the event you are sued or your wealth comes under attack, the trustee can request a dissolution of the partnership and have 99% of the limited partnership's assets transferred offshore to the trust. Of course, real estate being immovable would still be subject to a legal court's jurisdiction. A properly formed land trust can be used for real estate holdings or a mortgage in favor of the a properly formed land trust can be used for real estate holdings or a mortgage in favor of the asset protection trust can be utilized so that no equity remains exposed to creditors. Nevertheless, securities and other intangible assets are easily transferred. If a court were to order that these assets be returned, you could argue the defense of legal impossibility for they are not yours to return. Under the terms of the trust, it's kind of weird. Like, whoever wrote the laws, it's like they didn't really fucking weren't that smart. So there's like gaps in it. And I wonder if they're trying to change them. If, if they, Nevertheless, securities and other intangible assets are easily transferred. If a court were to order that these assets be returned, you can argue the defense of legal impossibility for they're not yours to return. Under the terms of the trust, the foreign trustee is obligated to protect trust assets and is therefore unable to comply with such an order. Under the terms of the trust, the foreign trustee is obligated to protect trust assets and is therefore unable to comply with such an order. In addition, the trust is structured so that the the trust is structured that so that the settler, the individual setting up the trust, cannot control the distribution of the trust. So, so you have to make sure the trust is structured so that the settler cannot control the distribution of the trust. Again, a United States court may not compel the individual to return the assets when he has no control over them. It should be noted that a creditor with a legitimate claim against you may retain offshore counsel to reach your assets. It should be noted that a creditor with a legitimate claim against you may retain offshore counsel to reach your assets. Also, they may go over there and... and go reach offshore counsel. However, in the case of the frivolous and meritless claim, an asset protection trust in a distant jurisdiction may be used to deter litigation. Further, the courts in many offshore jurisdictions will not recognize a United States claim that does not constitute a local violation. So if it's not a violation over there, they don't, they're not, they don't, because um, that, that trust it's it's a it's an asset protection trust, but it's an offshore protection. It's should you venture offshore with offshore protection tr offshore asset protection trust. So it's an offshore asset protection trust. Okay. So, however, in the case of a frivolous, meritless, meritless, like like a like fucking disrespectful claim, no merit, no fucking no balls, no no respect. An asset protection trust in a distant jurisdiction may be used to deter litigation. Further, the courts in many offshore jurisdictions, you know, let's say my, I have an offshore trust somewhere. The courts in many offshore jurisdictions will not recognize a United States claim that does not constitute a local violation, thus making it difficult for a United States creditor to, to collect in certain instances, which, which is fucking dope, you know? All right, uh, once the trust is settled, assets are held by a foreign trustee. The trust company is subject to an overseer. A protector, which may be, be the settler, is appointed to oversee and monitor the trustee's activities. Also, once the trust is settled, assets are held by a foreign trustee. The trust company 
is subject to an overseer, a protector, which may be the settler, is appointed to oversee and monitor the trustee's activities. The protector may replace the trustee if conditions so warrant, providing the settler with fur further protection. Nevis and the Cook Islands have become preferred jurisdictions for asset protection trusts, while each has its own advantages. A number of common features are also as follows. The trust, corporations, LLCs, and limited partnerships in each jurisdiction are not taxed. While each has its own advantages, a number of common features are as follows. So it's just some are different, but most, this is just giving us an idea. The trusts, corporations, LLCs, and limited partnerships in each jurisdiction are not taxed. Creditors claims to trust assets must be brought in the local court of each jurisdiction. Courts do not recognize foreign judgments inconsistent with local law. So just because, oh, it's, it's a creditor from the United States, they're not going to just, oh, let them think they're the big bully and just fucking put their, you know, they're their own separate country. So in Nevis and Cook Islands, there are two year limitation periods for bringing claims to set aside transfers to a trust. What is he saying? In Nevis and the Cook Islands, there are two year limitation periods. In Nevis and Cook Islands, there are two year limitation periods for bringing claims set aside transfers to a trust to avoid being subject to a fraudulent conveyance claim it is prudent to set up the apt as soon as practical trust must be registered with the local authorities in nevis and the cook islands So what is this? So you already have to have the APT set up for two years before you try to before you uh, so it has to be already set up two years before you could bring before you could transfer uh, transfer your uh, your assets to the trust. In Nevis and the Cook Islands, there are two-year limitation periods. For bringing claims to set aside transfers to a trust. Either it's saying you have to have it set up for two years before you could bring assets to an over over a, an overseas trust, or or it's saying that you have to keep your assets within that trust for two years. So, a successful asset protection plan is achieved when an advisor is able to properly combine the asset protection aspects of a trust with a settler's required degree of control over the assets. A successful asset protection plan, a successful asset protection plan is achieved when an advisor is able to properly combine the asset protection aspects of a trust with a settler. Just read that slow. A successful, we have like another 20 minutes probably. A successful asset protection plan, asset protection plan is achieved when an advisor is able to properly combine the asset protection aspects of a trust with the settler's required degree of control over the assets. Various arrangements may be used when transferring assets to a trust in order to achieve that balance. These include having title to the trust assets held in the subsidiary, having title to the trust assets held in a subsidiary which is owned by the trustee but over which the settler has some measure of control. As mentioned, one option is a family limited partnership structure where the general partner Having day-to-day -day control of the partnership is either the settler or someone of the settler's choice. The trustee holds 98% or 99% limited partnership interest and therefore effective ownership of the underlying assets. Another option is to use an offshore corporation or LLC with the person of the settler's choice acting as director or officer of the company and having day-to-day -day control of the underlying assets, providing that bank accounts are to be I don't know. Okay, so the next point, providing that bank accounts are to be operated jointly by the trustee and such other person as is acceptable to the settler. I think the settler would obviously be me, right? Because I come from another country. 
um, appointing additional trustees of the settler's choice. A successful asset protection plan is achieved when an advisor is able to properly combine the asset protection aspects of a trust with the settler's required degree of control over the assets. Okay, um, appointing a trust protector. A protector is not a fiduciary and does not hold title to trust assets but has such powers as may be specified by the settler and incorporated in the trust document. Typically, these powers include the ability to control the exercise of specified trustees' authorities, ability to control the exercise of specified trustees' authorities, such as, for example, the power to distribute the beneficiaries. was a weirdo providing in the trust document for certain powers to be obtained keep providing in the trust document for certain powers and controls to be retained okay appointing a trust protector a protector is not a fiduciary and does not hold title to trust assets but has such powers as may be specified by the settler and incorporated in the trust document. So typically these powers include the ability to control the exercise of specified trustees authorities, such as for example, the power to distribute the beneficiaries. Next point, providing in the trust document for certain powers and controls to be retained and exercised by the settler. Yeah, well, yeah, you have to provide in for certain powers. You have to uh, providing in the trust document for certain powers and controls to be retained and exercised by the settler. In order, to, in order to establish an offshore asset protection trust, it is a requirement that there be at least one trustee in the local jurisdiction. This trustee will be a trust company licensed by the local jurisdiction. Yeah, they had that shit set up already. Talked about the Rockefellers, it's been years. Fees will vary based upon the amount of work performed. At a minimum, for a trust with limited activity, trustees' fees are a thousand per year. An asset protection trust is a tax neutral structure providing neither tax benefits nor detriments because it is not tax motivated and taxes are paid on gains each year on the grantor's 1040. Asset protections, action, asset protection trusts are legitimate vehicles. Action, asset protection trusts are legitimate vehicles. It's beautiful. Okay, uh, an APT is a tax neutral structure providing neither no tax benefits nor tax detriments because it is not tax motivated. And taxes are paid on gains each year on the grantors 1040. The grantors, the one who granted you the uh, trust. However, because a number of persons that set up asset protection trusts choose not to report income. The IRS recently passed legislation requiring reporting of such, such activities. Now, any United States citizen who created a foreign trust or transferred money or property to a foreign trust must report the event. Information to be reported includes the name, address, and identification of the transfer, the trust, and the trust beneficiaries and trustees. In addition, the interest of each beneficiary, the location of the trust records, and value of each item transferred must be reported. The interest of each beneficiary, the location of the trust records, and the value of each item transferred must be reported. Further, any United States citizen who receives a distribution, who receives any and any, any type of asset from a foreign trust must file a notice reporting the name of the trust and the distributions for the year. Penalties of 35% of the gross reportable amount are levied for failure to file notices of transfers. Failure, failure to annually report trust activities brings an initial penalty equal to 5% of the gross reportable amount. In terms of a downside, recent United States court decisions have held that United States beneficiaries of an APT cannot argue the defense 
of legal impossibility when ordered to return assets to the United States. Fucking United States, man. In terms of down, in terms of a downside, recent United States court decisions, recent United States court decisions, have held that United States beneficiaries, someone who's going to benefit off of that asset protection trust, that's a the off the offshore action, uh, the offshore asset protection trust cannot argue. The beneficiary of an asset protection trust cannot argue the defense of legal impossibility when ordered to return assets to the United States. In one case, the court held the beneficiaries in jail until they ordered the trustee to return offshore funds. What the fuck? Cannot argue. So state beneficiary, okay, this is the... In terms of a downside, recent United States court decisions have held. Recent United States court decisions have held. Okay, where the fuck am I? Okay, in terms of a downside, recent United States court decisions decide have um, have held. The United States beneficiaries of an APT cannot argue the defense of legal. A possibility. This just sounds like it's not going to work no more. Because in terms of a downside, recent United States court decisions have held that United States beneficiaries of an asset protection trust cannot argue the defense of legal impossibility. In order to return assets to the United States, in one case, the court held the beneficiaries in jail until they ordered the trustee to return offshore funds. It can be anticipated that other United States courts will take similar steps, especially in egregious cases. It must also be noted that one should not set up an APT when he or she is in litigation or when litigation has been threatened. In such instances, a court could easily find that a fraudulent conveyance of assets to defraud creditors had occurred. A fraudulent conveyance of assets. Like a fraudulent conveyance, like a fraudulent act of assets to defraud creditors that occur. Be certain to discuss your. Also, it's it's saying if you're in litigation with anything, if you're in court being sued with, for anything, and you you automatically move your your funds, they might say you were doing some fraud fraudulent shit. Be certain to discuss your current situation completely with your attorney so that a fraudulent conveyance, which puts you in an even worse position, does not arise. Nevertheless, a tax neutral. Asset protection trust created for asset protection purposes may still be effective. While the IRS reporting while the IRS reporting requirements are designed to prevent abuses in the use of APTs, the benefits are still present in a property form APT. Yeah, you have to annually, you know, you have to report to the IRS. Under the, you have to just report everything that's going on in that trust. Under the terms of a given asset protection trust deed, the settler, with the consent of the trustees, could have the ability to add or delete beneficiaries, thus retaining the right to vary his or her interest. The settler also has a revisionary right to the assets in the trust at the end of the trust period. So you can rewrite it up. As the settler retains some interest in the trust, the gifts... Okay, as a settler retains some interest in the trust, the gift is deemed to be incomplete. Hmm. As a settler retains some interest in the trust, the gift is deemed to be incomplete, and it, it therefore incurs no gift or estate taxes. The APT's assets are included in the settler's estate upon his or her death. Again, because control is maintained, the APT is treated for income tax purposes as a grantor trust, meaning that the settler is taxed on any trust income. However, remember, the important feature is that the assets are not owned by the settler and are thus out of reach of the creditors. In the event that the settler does not wish to pay for the taxes, an irrevocable gift In the event that the settler does not wish to pay further taxes, 
an irrevocable gift or other planning strategy may be utilized, you should always use a qualified professional to assist in such planning. A properly structured asset protection trust and or IBC is not subject to any income, gift, estate, business, excise, transfer, or other tax in the selection in the in the selected jurisdiction. APTs are generally treated as exempt trusts, so long as none of the beneficiaries are residents of the offshore jurisdiction. Meaning for like exempt, meaning like if you have to file for bankruptcy. So as long as none of the beneficiaries are residents of the offshore jurisdiction. Likewise, an offshore corporation or LSC that conducts no active business in the selected jurisdiction will also be exempt from taxation. Jason learned of several examples of how an offshore corporation or LSC could benefit an American citizen. ABC Incorporated is a commodities broker. It frequently brokers offshore trades between buyers and sellers that are not based in the United States. By setting up an offshore corporation to handle such trades, ABC's direct and indirect offshore profits will be free from tax in the offshore jurisdiction. Def Corp owns intellectual property rights that, in, that it intends to license worldwide. By placing these rights in an offshore corporation, it protects them against U.S. creditors and while absent, and, and while absent further tax planning, any gain will be taxable in the United States by aggressively, al by aggressively allocating general and administrative costs offshore. The U.S. parent company can realize significant gains in its offshore company. GHI Limited is a manufacturer of aircraft components. A percentage of its sales are to overseas buyers. Two options are readily apparent. First, it may create a United States sponsored foreign sales corporation. It can, it can create United States sponsored foreign sales corporation in the U.S. Virgin Islands, Barbados, or other approved jurisdiction. An FSC would allow GHI Limited to save 50. An FSC, Foreign Sales Corporation, an F, a, a, N. No, a foreign sales corporation would allow GHI Limited to save 50% on its U.S. corporate tax return for the overseas sales. Second, GHI can create an offshore corporation to represent it in such sales. The offshore representative corporation, with proper planning, may receive a commission that is tax-deferred and accumulates tax-free offshore. May receive a commission... A JKL Professional Corp is a group of doctors, all of whom are, are tired of paying astronomical malpractice insurance premiums. That's crazy, even though the doctor gets fucking sued. It's probably not even like that in Cuba. Cuba, there's like... JKL Professional Corp Corporation is a group of doctors, all of whom are tired of paying astronomical malpractice insurance premiums. A tax haven captive insurance company can be formed to reinsure casualty risks, thus saving a significant amount of money in premium payments. A tax haven captive insurance company can be formed to uh, to reinsure casualty risks, thus saving a significant amount of money in premium payments. And any premiums paid to the captive can accumulate tax-free while excess premiums may be returned as dividends. MNO Limited is a Bahamas corporation owned by American entrepreneurs. AP. Okay, you know, MNO Limited is a Bahamas corporation owned by an American entrepreneur's asset protection trust. Because so many U.S. and non-U.S. companies do not want to register the securities with the U.S. securities, because so many U.S. and non-U.S. companies do not want to register the securities with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. There are some very interesting and lucrative investments to be had offshore. As a result, it is a truism that for, ec ec that for economic 
diversification and overall better returns okay as a result it is a, it is a truism that for ec, ec, as a result it is a, it is a truism that for economic diversification and overall better returns it is best to invest through an offshore entity mno mno allows its american beneficiary to access offshore opportunities close to him or her in the united states please note american citizens are taxed on worldwide income you cannot simply set up offshore and evade u.s taxes however with proper planning certain taxes can be legitimately avoided it is important to obtain proper counseling from your attorney and accountant so that you do not violate u.s law in the selected jurisdictions discuss confidentiality is a keystone to the overall protection of individuals trustees and nominee corporate officers directors and llc managers are bound by the law of jurisdiction and by contract not to reveal the principal's identity not to reveal my identity while resident agents nominee officers and directors are identified in yearly filings the identity of shareholders is not required similarly in certain so resident agents like because the, the people that are living in that jurisdiction to where you you, you uh, set up your apt they are identified in yearly filings similarly in certain jurisdictions there is no register of trust similarly in certain jurisdictions there was no register of trust and no statutory means by which the public may gain information regarding the existence or terms of any private trust. There is no periodic reporting requirement of any kind with regard to trusts. Offshore bank accounts are, protect, are protected by strict statutory bank secrecy laws. Confidentiality is a key element of the banking and trust business in the jurisdictions utilized. In addition to the common law duty of confidentiality, there is imposed upon every licensee and its employees a statutory obligation of confidentiality respecting the affairs of its customers so confidentiality is a key element of the of the banking and trust business in the jurisdictions utilized in addition to the common law duty of confidentiality there is opposed upon every licensee and its employees a statutory obligation of confidentiality respecting the affairs of its customers breach of this obligation is punished by fine or imprisonment or both all to the ultimate benefit of the depositor as you can see the immediate advantages of setting up an asset protection trust offshore as soon as possible so that the inner also that the, the the timer started running on claims that could be asserted he promptly hired an experienced attorney to set up an apt and related offshore corporations an llc to achieve his asset protection goals So yeah, there's something about two years. Either you have to wait two years before you could put something in your APT, or it has to be in there for two years. Some you have to wait two years nonetheless for something. So conclusion: by forming and placing assets in an asset protection trust, wealth can be shielded from attack and frivolous litigation deterred. That's just saving you from people's fucking phony ass suing your ass. However, it can be anticipated that American courts may deny protections in certain extreme cases. A number of offshore jurisdictions provide sophisticated and confidential trust banking and investment advice in a tax-free setting. It is important to place assets in an APT as soon as practicable so that any claims um, to set aside a transfer trust can be time barred. It is important to place assets in an asset protection trust as soon as practicable so that any claims to set aside a transfer to the trust can be time barred. I don't know what that means. It's just wanted to hurry up and do it. So that was the end of um, section five, chapter eight.